Welcome to Desert Island Tims. With me today is a former Celtic player who had two stints at Celtic Park. He was a fan's favourite then and we still hold a special place in our hearts for him. Frank McAvenny, how are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me. It's good to have you here. So, what was life like for the young Frank McAvenny growing up? It was it was rather nice, actually. It was... Uh, I didn't play football. I mean, I didn't play football when I was a boy. I played when I was in, I was in primary school. And when I left primary school and went to secondary, I didn't play football. Never played at all. So life was good for me because my dad used to take me to go and watch Celtic every week. And everyone played in the same day, you know, amateurs, juniors and professional played Saturdays and they did. So it was great, I never played football at all. I used to go and watch Celtic home and away. And uh, so life couldn't get better for me, it was, it was lovely all the way through my teens. All the way through, right through, getting lifts, lifted over the turnstile. I'm sure there would be a lot of people remember that. And it was great, great atmosphere. My dad used to take me to the, the Celtic end. And then when I was getting a bit, you know, going through my teens, I was... Getting a bit rebellious, I, I went to the jungle and, and that became my home for the next sort of a four or five years. And I used to go with my dad and then just walk and get into the jungle and it was it was great. You know, it was, it was good fun. Excellent. So your first song, what, why did you pick that and who is it? The first song, I mean, I'm, 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 as you'll probably gather as we go along, my musical interest is very varied. Um, it's just going back for years, and I've always liked this song. Um, I liked the film, a bit cheesy, but I liked it. Um, I think it was my first girlfriend or something like that time, but <laughs> <laughs> one of the many. But um, it's uh, a song called Iris, and it's from a soundtrack from a film called City of Angels, and it's the Goo Goo Dolls. So that was Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls. What took you into football? Just by luck, honestly, it was uh, it was by chance. Celtic was uh, the Celtic game was cancelled. I used to play in the summer. Mm. You know, Pat McCluskey used to run a team called Coulsaith St Pat's. I went and played against them because there's a team called the Campsie Black Watch. I went and tried with them, to amateur team, and they, they said it wasn't good enough. So Coulsaith St Pat's were playing against them, and I knew I was better than anyone they had. But I didn't like the manager, didn't like me, which probably... It was a trend that followed me a lot in my career. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, because I went and trained with him during the close season and I played against Campsie Black Watch. That was the only reason I went with him. And and then that was it finished. They said, we want to sign you. And I said, I don't want to say, I don't want to play. And they said, we've got a game on Wednesday, do you want to play in that? I said, no. And they said, it's against Coach South Rangers. And I went, yeah, I want to play in that one. So I played a couple of games for them. Played against Coach South Rangers and they... Uh, you know, it was my first sort of a first time coming up against because they were proper batting Kosei, so it was good fun. I enjoyed it, and that was the only time I played. Then, uh, and it was just by I went back playing football, and it was by accident that um, Celtic game was cancelled. I met some pals, and they asked me to go and play, and, and there was some kids watching this boy I was playing against, and, and that's how it started. It was very lucky. So, it was your first uh, professional or senior team? Well, I signed for Johnson Borough. It's a junior club, which was professional anyway. Mm. Um, but St Mun, St Mun. I went in trial when I was at St, when I was at Jun Johnson Borough. I went in trial for Thistle. And Bertie, our wonderful Bertie Old, told me he put me on his sub in a trial game, and I thought you don't do that. Yeah. And then he took me off in another one, and he, and I was so thin. And he said, and I was sitting in the bath, and I remember him coming in saying, "Look, son, you're not big enough, strong enough." Um, go back to junior and I remember looking at him and saying that was a moment I decided that I was going to make it because mm -hmm. I knew it was better than the players that he had mm -hmm. um, and to this day Bertie's I've never let him forget that <laughs> 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 he actually said to me at Celtic Park a couple of weeks ago it was he says uh, he, was, he was holding court as Bertie does right. he's holding court and he says I never signed him for Patrick Thistle um, he says that just shows you the calibre of players we had at Thistle <laughs> 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 he got in first, but that's better for you. <laughs> Brilliant. Your second song. Second song. Um, you'll find that I'm up and down here with the, the songs, but uh, I'm very. I'm going to go for a bit of influence and in, in new and old. But my second song is Savage Garden from another soundtrack. Uh, it's truly madly deeply. That was Savage Garden, truly madly deeply. 
Who were your influences and your heroes? Influence and heroes at Celtic? Well, my influence. My dad was my influence, really. Mm-hmm. Um, he used to take me everywhere. Couldn't drive, my uncle took us. You know, him and my uncle used to go all the time. He took me out to all the games. I was the only one of my brothers. I used to get lifted over the turnstile and all that. I was passionate about it. The biggest thing I remember was speaking to, when I spoke to Billy McNeil when I, about signing. Aye. We were talking about different things and and he says, what's your memory? And my memory was Celtic won the European Cup in 67. I was only a boy. I remember watching it and uh, seeing how everyone in my family was going ecstatic. And then my dad took me to Celtic Park to see them come back with a trophy. And it was just frightening. It was it was frightening, but so exhilarating. And you know, I was only a wee boy, you know, it was, and that's a memory. Mm. My dad was saying then, this will never be done again. Uh, you know, and how true was that? I mean, nearly done it a couple of years later. Yeah. They got the final, but, you know, what he was saying was, uh, it was for a, for a team like that, you know, and... That's why I suppose this, the 67, the Lisbon Lions is uh, a memory that will never go out of anyone's, any Celtic supporter's mm. mind. And, uh, and I'm glad that they're now back into Celtic because they were they were forgotten about for a long time, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I don't think, I don't think, Celtic's all about history. Mm. And that's what, you know, that's what it's about. And, and every team, you know, that's what Paul McNeil said to us in the centenary, you've got to create your own history. Mm. This is, this is yours and... And that's what the team's got to do now, so, yeah. That's my... My heroes was my dad, he was my hero, and, and um, memories of Celtic, coming back to Celtic Park. But as I, grew, as I was growing up, um, Kenny. Right. Kenny was my idol. He, he lived in Milton, where I came from. Uh-huh. Um, and the boys used to tell me he couldn't get a game. He was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> they used to put him in goal. <laughs> so, so for me to become his mate... Aye. And play up front with him, and for for the blue of Scotland was um, was a dream come true for me. Yeah, and I'm still friends with him now to this day. So that's that's making a wee bit of nostalgia, but it's great. It's great that I, I went. Tommy Burns said to me, he says I'm totally different from anyone else. Everyone's Celtic supporters that played with Celtic and all that. He says, but I've went for the terrace and on the park. And nobody ever, nobody's ever done that. Mm-hmm. So in that respect, I think that's why the fans still like me and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. because um, I've I've done a lot of things wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think they see a lot of himself and me, yeah. and uh, so that's you know. But that was my, my dad. Still like coming back to Parkhead with the European Cup, and kind of glaciers. I was standing in the jungle. He was my in '77 when he went to Liverpool. I thought my world had ended. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Kenny. So your your third song. Third song is. I'm going to go up and down as I say. My third song is. This reminds me when I went to London. I was, and I met a certain girl called Kate Moss, and she liked this group, and uh, and they come up just they come out with this great song, and uh, I think it was only one song they ever had, mm-hmm. but the Body Rockers, I like the way you move. What are your earliest memories of going to Celtic Park? Oh, my earliest memories was, um, you know, as I, as I said earlier, probably going, going to Celtic Park, the European Cup coming and parading mm. around the track, the big red ash that I think I was sick on a few times when I went there and I was, had to run round many, many times, usually for being late. <laughs> um, um, yeah, just that and, and watching Kenny, was, I mean, that was my earliest memories and... I just, it was, some of the games, it was just, uh, I mean, I used to go and watch wee Bobby and all, you know, and big Bully, and when I went to Celtic, you know, Bully with McGaffer and wee Bobby Lennox, the coach, and it just, it, you know, it's a bit, that's your heroes, you know, Yeah. Aye. and uh, it was a bit interesting, I still mean, you know, I still call him Gaffer, uh-huh. um, he always will be, he's, um, He's different class to me, and always, you know, he's getting a wee bit on that, but he's always, always knows me, and, you know. And he's pleased to see that I've not changed. <laughs> I've no, every time I see him, I've got somebody different with me. But 
He's like, you know, still married? No, in between wives. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> but he's, uh, yeah, Big Bully was, uh, I suppose he's, a, he's my, fo- my first memory of Celtic, really, with the European Cup. And then, t- as I say, it's strange, you know, kind of glish, being his, I was his roommate and for the strike partner for Scotland and and friend and big bullies I mate and you know he's my gaffer but and he'll always be called that and me Bobby was my coach you know so it was, it's just strange it's it's all a big love affair with Celtic you know it's it's uh, it'll never change what's Bobby like? different class Bobby was brilliant he was great at training because he used to tell you to do things and you know Tommy Craig was there with Bully and me, me Lemon used to take us and but the good thing about it is Lemon could show you how to do it. And Tommy was not a bad player either, Tommy Craig. But see when they go out and show you right. things you like that and put pressure on you, you know, because Bobby wasn't a bad player. Aye, he was a good player. Aye, well, I wouldn't say. <laughs> he's brilliant. I, love that, I loved him. I think he was brilliant. I thought he was absolutely different class, but I'll not tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> it was un- unbelievable, you know. Him and Jinky. Uh-huh. We Jinky getting the ball and, you know, and used to talk to the gaffer and ask for stories and he used to say, you know, because you, he used to make sure that I could hold the ball when the ball came to me. And he used to say, when, when we were knackered, we used to get the ball to Jimmy. Mm-hmm. And Jimmy would give you two minutes. You know, he'd just hold the ball and beat players and get a throw in, get it again and get a throw in. And he would know when the defence was under pressure, he'd just get to Jimmy and he would... Stories like that, you, you can't buy these stories, you know. And Big Paul used to tell us that, and me, Bobby, you know, him and Jinky, what the size of them? Two munchkins up front. Aye, aye. <laughs> you know, it was... Uh, it was strange, you know, it's, um, but that was the stories that's, you know, all them, all the heroes, you know, it's, I mean, I know Kenny was mine because I was, I wanted to play up front, mm. but Big Bully, Lemon, Jimmy Johnson, you know, and I know a lot of people like Henrik um, for, for great reasons, but I was so pleased when, when Jimmy got the best ever silk, mm. you know, um, because that, to me, he was the best number seven, probably. Celtic or any other clubs I've had, mm-hmm. I would imagine, you know. Him and Best were my two, yeah. my two idols. So, yeah, so. And I became pals with him, that was, was frightening about <laughs> as well, so, you know. They're a shocker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was my, and they were all my heroes. They were all, they were all different, different things led you to, to where I am today, but yeah. Just wonderful memories of Celtic, you know. Brilliant. Your fourth song? Fourth song, I'm going. I'm coming out in a wee bit of, uh, you know, you've got to grow with the times, and I'm coming into, before I go back to my heavy stuff, I'm going to go with, uh, there's a few songs I like in the charts at the moment, round about now, and and this one was a, last year, but it's, uh, I introduced a guy called Pitbull, um, and he had this song with Christina Aguilera, and it is called Feel This Moment. That was Feel The Moment by Pitbull, and... Christina Aguilera. That's it. Well done. <laughs> uh, what irritates you? What irritates me? Bad manners. I do not like people with bad manners. Um, I think it's so wrong. Uh, I was brought up in the mountain. My parents brought me up right. You know they. Um, you know just just simple things. Open the door for women, and you know and. Do something, say sorry. You know, it's nothing. Doesn't cost you nothing. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, it's it's just a it's just a trait that I've been up and and I. Well, it irritates me in the football field to see people not getting hundred percent. Yeah. If I see people not chasing balls or, I, I'm just maybe it's just because I don't. I chased everything. Um. But my teammates, I know how much my teammates like that. Mm-hmm. You know, because sometimes they can't play the perfect pass you know and sometimes they're under pressure and they just got to smash it out and turn a bad ball into a good ball that's what I always said you know and and, uh, and it was fortunate because all my teammates liked that and that's that was a trait that every club I've been at um, i always done that made sure we, we defended from the front and all that kind of stuff and I like seeing that in teams you know I made a statement a couple of weeks ago that it was a uh, Football is now middle class to upper class. I, I still stick by that, you know. I, I, I don't see the hunger for it. You know, I've, my company, we look after me, Dylan McGeoch at Celtic Park, and Dylan's from where I come from, and he's got that hunger inside him. Yeah. Um, he, he's got a great desire and a passion to 
to go far. And uh, I don't know if I see that with the rest of the boys, you know. I'm not saying they're good players, but yeah. see, when you, see when you lose the ball, nobody shouts in balls anymore. Exactly. You know, and, and that's because yeah. it's middle way up the class. It's because they're, they're not brought for the same. They're all athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Scotty Brown's got it. You know, he's on his game. He's, he niggles people and I know he's opposition. I like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I like that wee bit of devil about him. Right. And, um, you know, and, and that's what I'd like to see more players get. I'd like to see more players get a wee bit of that arrogance, you know, that Celtic always had. I don't see that. That's Teams are coming to Celtic Park now and they're not scared. Yeah. And that's because we've not got the arrogance, you know. Mm-hmm. I think we've got to get that back. And Lenny had the arrogance, yeah, when he played. You know, he, he walked about and think he owned the place, you know. He still does. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, you know, he had that arrogance on the part in that general. But there were so many generals up to him, up to that. I mean, Sutton, John Hartson, Henrik, every single one of them all fought for each other. Mm-hmm. You know, Lenny, Stan, Petrov, midfield, it was like, you know, if they lost the ball, big Yuan at the back, jeez, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you'd no way they're not shouting and bowling if you lose the ball. That's right. So when did it stop? I don't know when, but I would like to see that back. I would like to see, we used to argue before we went out, we used to argue at half time, that was a passion, and, mm-hmm. and nine out of ten we got the results we wanted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I would hope to bring that back. So that irritates me that I don't see enough passion because f- I see it in supporters. Sometimes I don't see it in the players. I see it in the management, definitely. Yeah. Um, uh, I, and I see it in some players, but I'd like to see it in every player. Exactly. Well, I can't, I can't disagree with you on that one. Aye. So, uh, your fifth song. Right up to date song. Um, only a couple of weeks, but uh, anyone who's... It's not a bad song, actually, but it's the video is different class, mm-hmm. and that's why I'm picking it. It's Robin Thicke, Bloodlines featuring Pharrell. Bloodlines by Robin Thicke. How do you relax? How do you relax? It's <laughs> 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 just a, a family show. Um, <laughs> um, I love the company of women. Um... Hence why I'm probably in the company of women a lot. <laughs> um, I relax around women, actually, I do. Um, family, yeah, I'm just... And, and I'm big into golf at the moment. Uh, something I never thought it would be, but it's great. Getting a golf course and... And... Uh, just have a game, and it's four hours, switch the phone off. Mm. Or leave it in the changing room and just go out and... And have a game with your mates, and it's good fun. I like it. It really is good. I never. I used to go to a lot of golf games, but they used to get and play golf, and I would stay in the bar. And by the time they come off the golf course, the party was started, <laughs> and uh, you know, and that was the only way they could keep up with me. <laughs> so I would, I would get them four hours. Of, I would get four hours of start, and then they would start. So that was uh, that was normally the, the way it was. But I used to keep everyone behind the waitresses, not a. Uh, and it was good fun but now I'm into golf and I see what I get what they all were talking about years ago right. and I was too busy wanting to party <laughs> but um, yeah I was um, I'm into golf and that relaxes me a lot you know and, and I believe I'm not and you know there's two guys I call my gaffer and that's Billy McNeil and John Lyle who's dead God rest him and uh, they would be shocked when I say that I go to the gym to relax as well <laughs> Believe it or not, they were they were just. But John Lyle would turn his grave if I was to say that because I hated training. But yeah, I go to the gym and do a bit. I just I see players my age and who played with me and all that, and I look at them and I go, no, I'm not going like that. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen to me. You know, they just they've accepted life and they're all fat and not going to happen to me. Mm-hmm. So I enjoy it. I go there and and have a run and have a swim and and I enjoy it. And it's good fun. Fantastic. Nah, and the women are no bad to watch either. <laughs> <laughs> Your sixth song. My sixth song is um, one of the all time greats for me. Um, I'm a big rock fan. And uh, I went to see these guys at Mount Keynes years ago. And they were superb. And this one is on my phone. It's the best intro ever. It's the most acknowledgeable intros ever. Um, it's Guns N' Roses, Sweet Child of Mine. That was Guns N' Roses, Sweet Child of Mine. So, 
What does the future hold for you? Future's good. The future's great at the moment. I'm I'm enjoying life. Mm-hmm. Single again. Um, which is I mean I was I was happily married, but you know, it wasn't just run its course. Mm-hmm. Um I'm back living in Scotland and I'm enjoying it, you know. I've I've got shares in, in a company. Um looks after some players. A company called Calcio, it's not bad. We do all right. My partner's was in a bone trade and he just wanted to get involved and and he's good talking. So he's uh I introduce him to people and he cracks on. And I basically I just open my doors and or if he talk he'll talk to the chairman of clubs and all that. Uh, but if he wants to get to the manager then then I'll phone them. Mm. You know, 'cause I've uh, one thing I do have is a good name in football and and especially in England, everyone everyone answers the phone to me, which is which is good. Um considering what a few years ago I was off the rails a bit but you know, it was a long time ago, and I'm, I'm, you know, everyone likes to come back, and I'm doing all right. I'm doing very well, so I'm enjoying myself. Um, I do a lot of charity work, a lot of charity work, maybe too much, but you know, um, this is going out, uh, and it'll be a couple of weeks later, I'm doing a thing for charity, getting my chest waxed, which is, I'm absolutely bricking myself to be honest with you, <laughs> um, especially in the fact that it's in front of 300 women. I know. I know it's, uh, <laughs> it'll be good but it's for a good cause it's for Chris Collins and his wife mm-hmm. um, it's for their charity Simba and, um, so you know there's not many p- people would do it but I'll put, I'll put myself on the line for charity and apart from that 300 women and me I've got to have a chance at the end of <laughs> <laughs> your penultimate song uh, my penultimate song is a group who are I've been about for a few years, I think they're from Vegas. Um, loved them. Love their songs, love their albums. Um, and I could pick as many, I could pick eight songs out of their albums. But one I've picked is Somebody Told Me by The Killers. It was the first one, their big hits, I think, that made them big. So it's The Killers, Somebody Told Me. Right, we've come to the part of the programme where I give you the complete works of the dandy. Mm-hmm and a copy of the Bible to take with you to your island. Would you like a copy of the Bible? I wouldn't mind, yeah. Wouldn't mind that, wouldn't mind it. It's, uh, you know, it's for years, same as everyone, I would imagine, it's always been there and you've always tend want to read it. Mm-hmm. But if I was on an island, I, I would like both of them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, you know, that would, that would just about sum me up, you know. <laughs> I can be serious at some points and, and then the dandy would be great. Right. Um, but yeah, there's some things in the Bible, you know. I think there's a lot that you can look at and maybe draw your own attention, you know, to Christianity or that kind of stuff. But I never get too deep into it. But yeah, I think it'd be a good read. Another book. Which other book would you take and why? I, would ha- I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. It's um, I like books, bio- autobiographies. I like books that are about people. Um, Kenny's done a couple, which I've read that, and I've I've read, you know, with Charlie. I've done I've done I've read a few books, but uh, nothing too intellectual, uh, you know. So I I don't know, but but I mean I, I can read I can adapt to anything, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. So I've not got a favourite. I've not got some that I would. Oh, I need to read that. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly wouldn't want that Fifty Shades of Grey when I'm stuck in Ireland, man. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know. It's a hard one. I, I wouldn't. I couldn't tell you. A luxury, something to make your life a bit more bearable on the island. And remember, it can't. It can't be a, a, a mobile phone, and it can't be another human being. That's a strange one. That. <laughs> um, I don't know. What would you have? A cooker. <laughs> <laughs> with plenty. Of, with plenty of gas, so you can cook things, so you can eat. Um, I don't. I don't know what I'd want. Just simple things, you'd need to, need to cook something, wouldn't you? So it's mm-hmm. something to cook in, I don't know, frying pan with you. I, I'm, not, I'm not very good at these homemade devices, so I would, <laughs> yeah, I could build a fire and all that kind of stuff, but you know, I'd need something to fry your stuff in or whatever. I don't know. Constant supply of uh, baking rolls would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Right, well, we'll airlift you in a constant supply yes, of baking right, rolls, baking right? Baking rolls, that'd do, tomato sauce. Tomato sauce. Okay. <laughs> right, uh, your final song. My final song is uh, against a rock group that 
bust on the scene 20 years ago or something, but um, I've seen them five times or something like that. So they're very, very good in coins. one of the biggest groups in the world. Um, it's Bon Jovi, and the song, apart from Frank Sinatra, who did it my way, this one is a bit more apt for me, and it's, it's my life. Frank McAbenny, thank you very much for being a Desert Island Tim. Thank you very much.